Well, before we start, just want to wish the, the guys tonight good luck in the draft. Um, as it begins, I know they'll all be really excited. Um, I'm excited for them and for this opportunity. We'll be watching closely. We'll be rooting for them. You know, I'm sure I'll continue to get phone calls about them late into the draft, early in the draft. It happens that way. Um, but I'm really excited for those guys in the uh, start of this next chapter for them. I know all of them are going to do really well. And those teams that choose to draft those Eagles tonight are going to be very fortunate teams. So good luck to all those guys tonight. With that, Dan, we'll open up some questions, man. I see your baby list. Mr. By about, by about 45 seconds, the, the 1 PM feeding, my wife's a saint. No doubt they all are, man. They all are. We'll uh, start things off with Rich. Hey, Ed, let's just start with the draft. Uh, could you just go over some of the professional attributes that Hunter, Max, and Isaiah possess? And from your NFL experience, what, what are some of the first challenges they're going to face when they get to their new teams? Well, Hunter, um, I think Hunter's a complete tight end, and he's so smart. Um, he'll pick up an off offense extremely quickly. Um, he's got the size and the blocking ability to line up and um, block as a tight end with his hand in the ground. And then he has the ability to flex out, move around, and create some mismatches. Um, he's got great hands and can catch the ball. He's a threat in the red zone. I think, I think he's going to make a team very, very happy, and I hope he's picked sooner than later because um, I think he's going to have a, a big future in the NFL. Uh, we'll just go with Isaiah next. Um, just fast, tough, physical, relentless. You see the way he plays. He's productive. Uh, I think his best football is ahead of him. I think that any team that – gets the opportunity to get him is you get a guy who's just going to get better and better and he's going to give everything that he has. Um, I guess next you said Max, right? So I think Max is a guy that I think Max is going to make a team very happy. I think the team that picks him is going to be uh, in for a real, uh, in for a real nice deal when they see how he approaches the game, uh, how smart he is, how he, how he studies the game. Uh, he could play multiple positions. I think he'll be a really good special teams player. Um, I think he's got a chance to, to stay in that league by, by the way he works, uh, takes care of his body, um, and he's a really productive player. I think all three of those guys are different. Um, I think anytime you get a, a guy early in their career in that league, it's, you know, you know sometimes I don't think it will be a scheme with our guys because I think they've all played in a very similar scheme to what they'll be asked to play in the NFL offense and defense for us. It's very similar. You know, the speed of the game, the competition, everything's really fast. And you think it's fast in practice, and then you get to the preseason game, and you think, wow, it's fast, and then you say, no, 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 no. Wait until we get the first real game, and you see how fast it is. Um, whether it's a defensive end or a DB, everyone on that field can really run, and it's very physical. Um, I think they're well prepared and I think they're all going to play in that league for a while. Um, so I'm excited to see where they go. And again, I just wish them the, the best and, and I'm going to continue to help them through the draft. We'll go next to Andy. Hey Jeff, hope you're doing well. Thanks, Andy. Um, I know Jim Phillips is on campus today, new commissioner. Um, what do you take away from that experience? And um, yeah, what was it like? I'm going to meet with Jim later today. I just came from a, a meeting with him and the head coaches, so we didn't really have too much one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I'm very excited to sit down and talk with him. I think it's awesome that he's visiting campus. Ton of energy. Um, you get a really good feel just listening to him. He's got an incredible presence. He's very, very intelligent. Uh, and you can just see how competitive he is and where he wants the ACC to go. Um, so I'm excited to pick his brain and really just get to know him a little bit later this afternoon. Very impressive uh, first meeting, though. Kind of a guy that lights up the room, and, and you feel who he is pretty quickly. We'll go next to Dan. Coach, I wanted to ask you um, about the, the, the announcement that came out with Adidas being the, the sponsor and just uniform looks and stuff like that. Uh, I know it, 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 it seems uh, you know superficial to when you're trying to get a, a game plan together, but with recruits and with the players, just how important is it to have like the right look with the team and with uniforms and equipment and, and everything that goes along with it? You know, I think for some players, it's really important for others. It might not be. I'm just really excited to partner with a brand that we really feel good about. Um, the guys were excited. I was excited. I love their product. Um, I love the look. It's classy. It's clean. Um, it's been around for a long time. Um, it's very comfortable, durable. 
Um, and, we're, and our guys are going to get a lot more gear. And I think, you know, Dan, if I, if I filled your locker up with, you know, a couple shirts and then, you know, all of a sudden I filled it up and it was full of shirts, you, you'd probably be pretty pumped, you know. As far as our uniforms go, we're, we're going to be clean. We're going to be classy. Um, you know, that, that's who we are and that's who we're going to be. Um, I don't want to kind of give away anything with, with what we think the direction of our uniforms are going to go, but um, I'm a pretty traditional guy. Um, we're going to make some changes to it, but all in all, I don't think you're just going to say, oh my gosh, where, you know, where did that, there's not going to be like any wings flying off of our shoulder pads or, um, you know, nothing crazy. Um, it'll be clean. It'll be classy. They'll pop, you know, they'll have a little bit of a fresher look. Um, but we're not going to change who we are. And, and um, you know, I'll, I'll show you guys when, as soon as they're done, but I'm really excited about Adidas truthfully. And I can tell the excitement from our guys, which to me is more important. Like, honestly, Dan, who cares what I think, right? It's about the players and, and they were pumped. So I'm going to be excited for them too. We'll go next to Trevor. Uh, Wings idea could actually catch on. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, maybe. Maybe one day down the road we'll have wings popping off of our shoulder pads. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Can you just reflect on the uh, the spring overall, just what you guys did to get better from start to finish and how it went from your eyes? Yeah, I mean, our guys competed at a very, very high level. Um, that was the most important thing to me. I wanted to see who really loved football and who was going to compete. And, you know, jobs were open. Jobs, in my opinion, are still open. Um, what do I mean by that? You know, it's there are certain positions where guys now in training camp might go in in the lead because uh, you have to have someone be the first guy out, right? Or else I'd be lying to you. Um, but training camp is going to be very competitive. And that's what I learned. We got a lot of guys who put themselves in really good positions. I think our starters that we all know who the starters at certain positions are going to be, they got better um, fundamentally, technique wise. I think we practiced uh, faster and knowing what we're doing. And more importantly, we were able to implement a lot more schematically in all three phases than we were last year because we really didn't have this time. Um, and then finally, I think our team continued to build, build on the culture that was started last season. I think these guys love each other. I think there's a toughness about the team. I think most of these guys love playing football with each other. Um, I'm excited to see if we can build off of that in training camp. We'll go next to Andy. I'm not going to ask you to crown one guy, but which players stuck out to you this spring, maybe surprised you, uh, took a big step forward? I know you mentioned Jalen Gill earlier this spring, but anyone else? Um, yeah, you, you always hate to single anyone out. You, you know, you mentioned Jalen. I thought, I thought Jalen had a really good offseason. Um, you know, Joey Luchetti came back, and um, in the practices that he had, we missed him. We missed his toughness. Um, his leadership, um, his play strength. He's a guy that just recently I, I kind of he popped off the film a little bit to me. Um, I think our D-line in general, you know, not to single anyone out really, but I think our D-line took a huge step and they need to, have to. I mean, tell you win games on defense, in my opinion, at least, and how we're going to play. So I'm proud of the D-line um, big time. Um, you know, those, those are the ones that pop out right now. I could, I could probably talk about 10, 11 guys, um, but you know, guys, guys did a good job. The starters improved and the guys who were the backups put themselves in position um, to try to earn a job or at least a role come training camp. We'll go next to Rich. Coach, on that, on that theme, uh, are the teams that are successful in this sport are the ones that build their roster from 23 to 44 as opposed to just one to 22? Yeah, you got to have depth. I totally agree with you, Rich. Um, you got to have depth. Guys get hurt. Guys get tired. Some teams play at such a fast tempo where you have to be able to roll people. Um, we need to build more depth here. And that's what I mean by I wanted this to be a competitive spring and a competitive training camp. Again, not that our guys aren't competitive because they are. I wanted to create competition because that pushes people, whether you're working as a coach or a player. That, that's really, in my opinion, it's healthy. Um, and we need that. We need it for special teams, um, and we need it in offense and defense. So that's very, very important to me, and I think we're, we're getting there. We're not there yet, but it's going to take a little more time. 
and we'll wrap things up with Jeff, uh, with Dan. Um, kind of in two parts on this is one is so, so with the spring training, with the spring training period ending, um, kind of where do you go from here? What goes into the summer? I know it's going to be different than last year for obvious reasons, but, um, you know, just from a logistics standpoint, where does, uh, where does it go from here? Once the, once the training ends? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're done tomorrow. They get a workout in and, and then I want them to focus on school, finishing up finals. Um, and then I want them to get away and I want them to have time with their families and I want them to be home and I want them refreshed. I want them to rest and they'll work out, but, um, I believe they'll be back June 1st. Um, but I believe, I don't believe Dan in this. And I think this is where a lot of, I might differ with a lot of people. I don't believe in bringing them back June 1st going all through June, all through July, right up to the day before training camp and starting training camp. Um, no, I want, I want to go and have a very solid plan. And we do in the weight room, Phil, Coach Matus has an awesome plan. Then I want to let them rest a little bit. And then we're going to go again, then we're going to rest a little bit. I want fresh minds, fresh bodies, excited players, confident players coming in the training camp uh, in great shape with great attitudes. Um, and I don't want to wear them out this summer. Um, so that's going to be very important to me. And the second part of that, um, I, I don't know if someone asked you this over the last couple of weeks, but I think the, the dead period is, is finally ending uh, with recruiting. And for you, just, um, you know, how great is it just to be able to get people on campus? And, and not only that, but let's start up. I think it's ending June something, I think was when it was announced. Yeah, I mean, this would be like the first time that since I've been the head coach here, we've had a chance to get guys on campus. So I'm really excited. Um, you know, if you think about it, we did this whole 2021 class on Zoom. You know, we've done most of our class right now in 2022 on Zoom. Haven't met them in person. Uh, they haven't been on campus. I mean, look, we get to have a chance to get guys up here in June, Dan. I mean, we've got one of the most beautiful campuses in the country and one of the greatest cities in the world. Um, so I can't wait. You know, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm really excited. So us as coaches, we'll take some time in May to watch the film and continue to work through that. And then in June, it will be, be full speed ahead. Hopefully we'll get a bunch of guys on campus and uh, see what we can do. So I'm excited, really excited. Jeff, thank you very much. I'll wrap things up for you today. We, we appreciate your time. All right, guys, I appreciate all your time this spring. Um, you know, this group here showed up constantly and, and I really appreciate you covering us and I appreciate your time. And I mean that you guys do an awesome job and I'm grateful for it. So thank you.